if we just uh, look at how the structure of Markdown is, um, anybody can learn and start using Markdown very easily because there are very few commands. So uh, my name is Ed. I like statistics. <clears throat> um, this is actually uh, just text that is uh, markdown code. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And I could put a title on this. I might call this um, Ed's blog or something like that. And I, I indicate that uh, Ed's blog is the title of this document with this hash mark. And maybe I um, have some uh, subsections. Subsections are done by adding you know, increasing numbers of uh, levels of of hash marks. So I might have uh, um, research publications, might have um, hobbies, etc. Um, there are a few other things. Uh, maybe if I want to highlight my name uh, in in italics, I could. Uh, use the asterisks, one set of asterisks around. And if I wanted to make statistics bold, now we're not able to visually see this yet, but uh, bold is just two asterisks. Now we could keep on going. There are a handful of these to memorize, but it is actually quite simple to, to memorize and to do. And we'll, we'll look at this when we go to R. Now the magic of this markdown, I mentioned that the flavor of markdown we're going to use is called Quarto markdown. Um, Markdown itself was invented as a um, as a language that was an alternative to HTML. It's even simpler than HTML, and what happens is that um, the Markdown language gets converted automatically by a piece of software to the more complicated HTML to do all the, the marking up, all the highlighting, all the text formatting. Now there's plain Markdown, there's R Markdown, in case people have used R Markdown for um, for reports or things like that. We've certainly used it a number of times in here. And, and now a new thing that R Studio, the Posit, the company that makes R Studio called Posit, that they have uh, been developing and supporting is called Quarto Markdown. So why, why make a new version? They've already had R Markdown. Now they've made Quarto Markdown. Well, the reason is that they've, they've made it um, at the same time, they've made it more powerful than plain old R Markdown, and they've also made it easier to use. Um, and I think a reason that they've made a new version rather than just making R Markdown more powerful and uh, easier to use is because um, the company that, that was formerly known as R Studio, now known as Posit, has been, uh, I think, re-strategizing their, their plan as a business to be um, less than 100% focused on R and maybe also have space to develop other data science languages like Python, like Rust, and those things. So what we're going to do is, um, whoops, I keep doing that, is we're going to um, write a very simple document using Quarto Markdown and then uh, our studio is going to convert uh, our our Quarto Markdown document for our personal website uh, into HTML pages, more than one, at least a couple, uh, that that will comprise an entire website. The magic is that the the engine within our studio takes that Quarto Markdown and they do all the fancy stuff. I'm not going to go into this, but um, they actually produce documents that contain HTML, hypertext markup language, it's what most web pages uh, are at the foundation. CSS, cascading style sheets, is a language that um, specifies a template for how pages look so that there's consistency on a set of pages. That in itself is a language. It's really fiddly to use, but uh, it's all automatically created by Quarto. Actually, there is some other code that will be created. Um, JavaScript is, a, is just another computing language that 
does um, a little bit of fancier stuff on web pages. All of that will be created automatically and you won't have to do any of it. What happens then is um, once you create the um, HTML pages, we're going to curate those HTML pages in the cloud using GitHub. We've talked about GitHub just a couple of weeks ago. GitHub is free to use. It's owned by Microsoft. It's used by lots of people. The purpose of GitHub is to store computer code files uh, in the cloud. It's really powerful co for collaboration, but I find it very useful just as a backup. And it, I, like a lot of people, I work on multiple computers. Some of them are here at the um, university. Some are owned by the university. Some are, you know, from at home. I want to be comfortable using my own computer at home. Have several laptops that I use for various reasons. Small one when I'm traveling. Fast and powerful one when I'm crunching numbers. Uh, I can use that code base in the cloud from any of those computers and it behaves exactly the same. And I can collaborate with other people and do so all the time. Now, another nice thing about GitHub for this um, activity today is that one of the features of it, I think it's a one of the lesser used features of GitHub, is that uh, you can take any code repository and you can make it into a free personal web page or any kind of web page. You can make it into a business web page if you're so inclined. And you can do it um, once for one repository for every account. But uh, but actually that limitation of once, it sounds so limiting, doesn't it? You can only do it once. We can actually get past that limitation if we make our uh, a new organization account. It's also free to make. And every organization can have one website repository. And the way that we do that is uh, they, the terminology that GitHub uses is this terminology of the, um, the GitHub page. Okay, so GitHub pages are served up as web pages. I've skimmed over some technical details here, but essentially that's it. Um, the advantage of using this system, in addition to it just being free and just being fast, we can all create a web page in an hour, is that um, we, um, we then will have a copy of the Quarto Markdown on our web page. And today, my ambition for everyone is to, uh, I, I sent around this uh, little bit of a explanation of what you need. Uh, you're gonna need a GitHub account if you wanna follow along and make a web page. I said that you would need a small picture of yourself and that, that's optional, really, um, but it's a nice touch for a personal web page just to demonstrate how to use pictures. Uh, I suggested a brief description of your research um, or anything else. And you can, if you haven't prepared that today, um, uh, you could take a selfie if you can transfer it to your computer and just write a couple of sentences just as a placeholder on your web page. So anything you want to will do. Now, um, I said to download and install Quarto for your operating system. That is certainly fine to do, and I hope some of you um, have investigated doing that. What I didn't know before I was setting it up for myself is that with the latest version of RStudio, they, they bundle Quarto, so you actually don't need to install it anymore. And the last one that I made Quarto web page, which was, I made a new Quarto web page just a few months ago. I did have to install and update Quarto on my own computer. So um, if you've done that, that's great, but it, it wasn't necessary if you've downloaded and installed the newest RStudio. Now, a thing I did not mention in my email is that bottom line up there is that um, the way uh, I like to suggest people begin using GitHub is with this uh, GitHub desktop app. And uh, if you haven't installed that yet, you could uh, you can install it while while I say a few remarks here. And um, but but don't let yourself get sidetracked while we're doing some of the other stuff because we, we only need to do it at the second step. If I just go back up to this and there are these three steps, you don't need half GitHub desktop installed until the second step. 
And so we'll pause there and anybody that needs to install it will be able to do that. We're recording this and uh, uh, what I've done, like I mentioned, is I've curated three different official documentation tutorials that I'm just going to go through in real time. I'm going to actually set up a, I have loads of GitHub web pages. Some of you know that uh, the, the web page that is this web page, whoops, the web page that is this web page is a GitHub Pages Quarto website. And some of you also know that the pages that I teach from, like uh, I'll just show an example um, of the bootcamp. The RStats bootcamp is a GitHub Pages Quarto website. And the ones that I teach my official courses on, Let's look at one of them. Uh, now, some people don't like that I do this. They, I know that they, some of my colleagues uh, in education administration here at Harper um, have made a few remarks to let me know they don't, they don't love it that I do this. And yet, I do do this. Uh, all of my teaching materials are 100% open, and I just link to them from the Hub or from Moodle on our internal system, but every piece of, uh, of uh, stuff that I, I teach with um, in each module that I lead is also a self-contained uh, GitHub Pages Quarto website. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. Today we're going to make a relatively modest website, <clears throat> and we're going to start with this um, Quarto.org's forward slash docs forward slash websites. This is the official Quarto documentation. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. And um, this is a very clever web page. The, the latest um, RStudio pages are, are very nice. Um, there's a quick start. We're going to choose RStudio. And uh, the very first thing that we're going to do is open up RStudio and uh, go up to the new project. I'm just going to demonstrate real quick. Our studio. I'm going to go up to File, New Project. And, um, and I'm going to make a, a new directory. I haven't made a directory for this repo today. And um, it's going to be a, a Quarto project. It's one of the options here. So I'm just going to select that. Now I want this to be a subdirectory of an existing directory, so I'm going to browse to the place I want it. And I'm just going to scroll to... Um, I've never really been big on personal websites, so I thought I would just go ahead and make a personal website. Now, the way that this works on GitHub, and I want to think ahead while I'm planning how this works for how I'm going to set this up, is uh, you can see I, I made a I made a folder already on my computer before today. You could make this folder anywhere you want, but I'm going to intend this folder to be um, if you if you've never made a GitHub Pages web page before. It might be a folder that that um, says git dash the name of your GitHub account. So it just I just having this remind me that it's attached to a GitHub account. That's the mother folder for this. Now the directory name is going to be the name of the repository inside the GitHub account. So I, I'm going to call mine a very generic name that's going to live in my in my GitHub repo. I'm going to call it website. <laughs> A very generic name. Yeah. So you file all the new new project? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you see the Quarto project on there? Got it? Yeah. 
I'm trying to keep one eye on the chat. So if anybody needs to slow down, just let me know. So you can catch up. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to take a bite of my cupcake while everybody catches up. Now, there's a couple of things on this um, project creation window that I'll comment on. One is the uh, the engine. The default is knitter, K-N-I-T-R. That's the default you should stay with. That's the homegrown software that converts Markdown, Quarto Markdown to HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Notice there's always also a Jupyter one there. This is a little bit of a hint. The Jupyter is um, a type of document that is really popular for Python coding. And you can also knit with Jupyter, but you don't want to do that for this. You don't want to use our env, that's our environment, for this unless you really need to. We don't need to. What that does is it... Um, it maintains all of the versions of packages and a record of all of the versions of packages in the R version that you use. Ordinarily, the way that I like to use our Markdown, I would probably uncheck, use the visual Markdown editor. You can turn that on and off as you want anyway, but for today, if it's your first time using this, I'd recommend just leaving it checked and I'm gonna leave it checked so we can do it together. I'm going to hit create project. Some stuff happened. It's opening up a new instance of our studio. Now, a couple of things I'm going to point out to you. One, I'm going to go back to my folder. I'm going to navigate to the place where I said I want my repository. <coughs> This was my uh, my folder. Now I had put in a little picture of myself, which I'll show you in a second, and some text that I'm going to put on my website here. But let's look in the folder that was just made. So it's made three documents, and it's made the folder for us. Um, one is called the um, underscore quarto YML. Now a YML file, we've seen these before. Most people pronounce that as YAML, a YAML file. And in um, on Macs and on Linux, uh, the extension is .yaml. So it, you, it actually looks like YAML, but uh, most people call this a YAML file. What a YAML file is, is uh, we'll open our YAML file in a second, is it's a set of instructions for the structure of your web page. We're not going to touch that very much today. The website, Porto Markdown document, is the text and stuff you want on your website. And the rproj file is a regular R project file that sets up your working directory and keeps track of the changes in our studio for you. That's all it's done. We can see all this stuff in our working directory that was set in our studio. And we can also see on our visual editor um, what's uh, what's happened. Now you can go ahead and change some of this stuff and we can see the, the visible um, changes here. I'm gonna change this to um, Ed's research blog. You know, change it to whatever you want. And uh, here, um, <coughs> my change, this heading to about, and and here is the place where um, I might uh, change that text that I said. But before we change too much else, there are these buttons here that say visual and source, and I'm I'm just going to click on source and to look at the source code for a second. Now, um, 
in the source, we can see that the way we specify the title here is um, is uh, within these dashes. Then we've got a, a header, a second level header. Then we just got some text. And uh, down here, we have an R code block. And uh, we specify a code block. Now we've gone through this before. But this is kind of neat because we can insert a block of code that actually runs and executes on this web page. So if you had, let's say you had a wanted to make a graph, you could upload a data set, read in the data set, and make the graph to display on your website embedded live in the uh, in the web page. But that's one way that you can make um, um, living statistical reports or scientific reports. Uh, using data. We're not going to do that today. Um, I'm just going to undo my changes real quick. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back to my folder. And if you did um, bring a bring a picture and that stuff, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to bring my picture into the website folder. make a new folder in here. Now you can just drop it into the root directory, but I want to early on, I'm thinking if I make this web page and it's got a couple of pages in the future and maybe a couple of images, maybe I'll have more than one picture. So I'm going to put my my picture there. I'm going to change the name of it to a nicer nicer name. We call it ed.jpg. We can just have a picture, look at the picture. My picture looks like this. Now there will be um, some issues with the size of the the image. This is just a detail we can worry about later. We won't worry about that today. But one of the things I want to do on my um, my web page is I want to insert my picture, and I might just uh, just use the header of Ed. Now the way we input a picture in Quarto is we use um, this funny little syntax. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger for everybody. I've put an exclamation point. I've put square brackets and I've put round brackets. And uh, what goes in the square brackets is a description of the picture. In fact, you don't have to put anything, but it's uh, like better practice to, to have a text description of images so that it includes people with, that are seeing impaired. So I'm just going to put um, this is a pic of Ed. And uh, in in uh, in the round brackets, you put a um, the path that leads to the picture that you're going to do. So mine is image forward slash Ed dot JPEG, if you remember. And it already renders because we have the um, even with the source editor, it renders the picture. Now we can we can do all sorts to make this change the size, center it, do all those aesthetic things we want. We're not going to mess around with that now because we don't have time. And then down here, I'm just going to put some text. Let's see what I managed to um, get for my my text here. Just going to open this up. I just took a little blurb from my CV here. And uh, I'm not going to put all this part with the links up here. I'm just going to take this little description of myself. Remember, we're just um, we are just uh, doing this as an example. I'm just going to put that there. And I uh, don't need to know the um, resolution of one plus one for this personal web page. So I'm just going to delete that code block. So if I if I zoom out a little bit so you can see what it it all looks like. It just looks like this. That's what mine looks like. If we look at the visual version of it. You can go back and forth with this visual. Um, editor like this. To see what it looks like. Everybody who wants to done that and come along. Some people are doing it. Yeah, 
the um, what this should do, the square brackets, if I just make this a little bit bigger, in Markdown, um, and all versions of Markdown behave similar to this, is uh, what usually happens with this syntax is in the square brackets, it's just a description of what the picture is. And uh, in the round brackets is a is a path to an image. It could also be a path to, if you use this exact same syntax and you link to a web page or something or a file, um, it will be a hypertext link to that website or or image. So it it uh, it's flexible and does several things. But for a picture, if you if you give the path to a picture. It will make a picture and make a little visual description. This is a pic of Ed. You can see under the picture there. And I think if you mouse over it, it will do the same. OK, I just want to peek at this YAML file. So I'm just going to click that open real quick. I'm going to save my website. Save that. And um, this is very simple. You know, this says project. Title, website, editor, visual. But th this file you can develop and you can add pages and a navigation menu um, in your in your web page if you want to develop it further. And there are instructions to do so, in fact. So let's go back to the web page here real quick. And let's find um, where we are. Um, so we're down to this part right here. A thing we haven't done yet is render our website markdown, our Quarto markdown, to a um, to a page. And we, right over here, when you have a Quarto project, you have this render button. And this is the button that um, will convert our HTML into a web page. And we can see a little bit of a um, of a preview of what our web page will look like. Notice up here it says localhost and it's made a website.html document and it's made this web page. Now let's just have a look at what's going on in our um, in our repo here. So if I look inside that website folder now, um, now we've got a a couple of other things. One, we have a, a folder that's hidden. We, we know it's hidden because the beginning of the name starts with a dot. That's how you hide folders. I have it so that I can see everything, but you may not see this folder if, if you have hidden files and folders um, hidden. And we have uh, two other things. We have a folder that says website files. And if we look into that a few clicks, we can see that quite a lot of stuff has been created. We have a CSS file, a JavaScript file, another CSS file, all of the stuff that it takes to make a complete web page these days. We also have this website HTML. If we open up this, um, it just is the HTML document and it calls on um, documents over here in this folder. So the assets like the picture would be embedded in there. So I'm going to go back to the Quarto documentation. And um, it talks a little bit here about setting up this Quarto YAML file. Probably it's the case that um, you would want to you'd want to come back to this file and uh, and play with that YAML file if you want to develop a more complicated web page than just a single static HTML page. Uh, you can look at the templates in my own GitHub repos, but uh, there are loads and loads of templates just in this official documentation. Um, it talks about using Quarto with the terminal. Um, you don't have to do that. You can use it the way that I've showed you. You can render it in the terminal with this command, um, but our um, our button up here that says render does exactly the same thing automatically by button. And by the way, the terminal that it's talking about is the um, is the actual terminal built into uh, RStudio as opposed to the R console. 
this is this is the R software running. And this is a terminal that allows you to um, talk to the computer. So they are different uh, in case you haven't encountered that before. Now it also talks about um, render targets and um, render targets are something that uh, you'd want to understand when you're building a more complicated web page. We're just going to go past that for now. And uh, I talked already about links. This talks about linking to different second sections in your document. I, we've already used this syntax for a picture. And then some um, other links for um, making your website more complicated, so learning more. This is all on the official documentation, which I recommend. I recommend because it's high quality and simple, the documentation, but I also recommend it because, because it, um, it, uh, this piece of software is under active development and it changes relatively frequently. Now we're gonna have to pick up the pace if we're gonna do this. Um, I do have a, um, <clears throat> another thing we're gonna have to do, but um, we'll do that in the second step. So let's navigate down to where we are. So we've just made our first website. Uh, I hope everybody, if you want to follow along, you're able to. Um, it's a very simple website, but it, it does comprise several documents and folders, even with the simplest one page, um, one page web page. And uh, that, that's the work that, that Quarto does for us. So now the second page, we're going to, we're going to make our web page a new GitHub repository on our um, on our computer, and there is also really excellent GitHub nav um, GitHub documentation on the GitHub website. I was really worried when GitHub was bought by Microsoft a couple of years ago that it would just be ruined and bloated by the megacorp, but uh, I've been really happy to see that it's maintained a it's actually improved since Microsoft bought it and the documentation is still really excellent. So I'm just going to open this link with you. I'm in trouble seeing my own cursor here for some reason, some weirdness with my um, sharing my screen. There it is. Okay, I'm just going to open this. Now this, um, you, this is the stage that if you're following along and you don't have GitHub Desktop, that you will need to uh, install that. I'm, I'm afraid that we're out of time to, uh, to spend a lot of time, but uh, we'll have the recording going. But assuming you have GitHub Desktop, you can follow along. And this is the page that uh, instructs how to add a repository from your local computer to GitHub. Now to do that, um, we're going to have to have a GitHub account. I'm just going to um, go to GitHub right now. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And I'm going to uh, log in. Hello. Oh my goodness, we have more goodies. So uh, if you if you leave more goodies, Iona, you have to take a cupcake. Uh, so come and come and grab a cupcake. Uh, yeah. Yeah, please grab one. No problem. Those are those are lovingly baked by uh, my friend and Market Drayton. OK, and now, of course, one of the things that uh, Microsoft has done is improve the um, the uh, security of GitHub, and uh, I was forced, I was maybe tricked is a better word, into doing two-factor authentication, but I really regret it because now every time I log in on a new device, I have to uh, use my phone to log into GitHub. So just give me a moment. Here we go. I'm going to use my authenticator app. One time, one time pass key that expires in a few minutes. So if you're if you're really fast, you could probably get into my GitHub account. Nope, you missed the window. 
OK, so uh, this is my, what my GitHub account looks like. I can go up here. I can look at my repositories. I have quite a lot of repositories, 34 repositories. I'll try to clean it up every once in a while. But, uh, <clears throat> but if I don't want my repositories in my, my default GitHub account. But you probably will. You probably will want to make this in your regular GitHub account unless you have another GitHub page in your GitHub uh, account. I do. So I, I can't just make a new repository that's a GitHub page in my account. So instead, I made earlier a new GitHub organization. And if I scroll down, I've got a lot of organizations too, because I have a lot of, um, of websites, like I said, for various reasons, research and teaching. And I, I made this one, W.E. Harris-me. <laughs> <clears throat> now, organizations act just like regular GitHub repositories. So, if you want to, if you wanted to come and see this while I'm developing it in front of you, you could navigate to GitHub.com uh, forward slash we Harris dash me. That's the URL to this organization. Haven't done anything to it. Doesn't have any repositories, um, but that's where we're we're going to put it. So, what I'm going to do is I want to add a repository called website that I made on my local computer to this to this GitHub account. So that's what we're going to do. So um, they have instructions here for Macs and for Windows. Um, they don't have instructions for Linux because they don't have GitHub desktop for Linux. But um, I'm going to follow the one for Windows. If you're using a Mac, you'll need the Mac one. So uh, you'll need to open your uh, GitHub desktop. The icon is this, this um, cute little, or depending on what you think, uh, it's an octopus cat. Maybe you don't think that's cute, but I think it's pretty cute. Um, and it says to add local repository. It's our first step. <clears throat> so I'm just going to click on that. Um, what it says is to choose the path to that repository. So I'm just going to choose the path. And uh, I'm just going to lazily copy the path, paste it in my document. So it's in my Dropbox, git forward slash we Harris forward slash, I mean, um, dash, me, backslash website. <clears throat> I said forward slash, but they're backslashes. I uh, kind of forget that because almost the whole world, except for Windows, does forward slashes. Now, if I uh, go to this website, um, it's pick the folder website, and I'm going to select that folder. So uh, I get this little message. This is a little quirk of um, GitHub Desktop that um, it's going to ask me, do I want to create one? And yes, I do want to create a new Git re repository. So there it is. Um, now the name of it is going to be website. The local path is going to be this. Now I think that um, I don't want to initialize this with a readme. I think this is going to do a thing that annoys me. I'm not going to let it annoy me too much for this demonstration, but what I think it's going to do is it's going to create a new website, a new folder called website in the folder called website. Let's see if it does that or not. It's a bit convoluted as always. Yeah, it is always a bit convoluted. Let's do, let's do it anyway. So I'm going to create that. Let's see what it did in my folder. So. Uh, no, in this case it didn't. So I think it has fixed that little um, that little problem of not recognizing the uh, website folder that you want. So uh, I get this little invitation over here to publish the repository. Now I'll, I'm going to be very thin on the detail for what's happening with the GitHub repo, as we did cover some of this before. Let's go back to the website. Um, that's the end of this. It just says click add repository. And then it says publish repository. I'm not going to do that quite yet. 
and instead I'm going to go to this this last one, which is the um, making our GitHub repo uh, GitHub page. And for that, I'm going to go to the Quarto documentation. Yeah. Which stage are you um, ensuring that this lands in your organization? Don't need the, on the general web page, or perhaps I don't understand. Mm. That's a good question. I think I did just make that mistake, actually. <laughs> I should have I should have just uh, fixed that, but I'm still not going to let that confuse the issue because I'll just delete it later when I clean this up. But you're right. It would be at that stage where you would I would set it, choose my organization. Because I'm logged in to the organization with the same email, it'll automatically detect if you've made a new organization. Uh, but that's a good point. I forgot to say that. To an existing or it has to be an existing organization. Yeah. I assume that most people wouldn't have a GitHub page already. Like it belongs on the organization anyway, if it's possible. But you can do this later automatically by creating an organization, cloning the website to the organization, and then deleting the one in the original. Yes. Yeah. And they can do that all right on the GitHub web pages. Now, there are a couple of, of uh, things to do here. And this talks of this is Quarto. This is Quarto's official documentation, and it gives us a few options here. It says there are three ways to publish Quarto websites. So you can you can render sites on your local machine to the docs directory. Check the rendered site into GitHub and then configure your GitHub repo to publish from the docs directory. Now, this is the one we're going to do. Another one is uh, if you have Porto and GitHub set up in our studio, is you can just publish it directly from Porto, but you have to set it, requires a little bit of setup and expertise. So, today I'm not going to do that. And the most advanced one is to uh, automate things with what is called a GitHub action which is a, an automatic piece of software that um, you can trigger or, or even set to be automatically triggered when an event happens. So that's the most advanced and it doesn't really fit our purposes. And we're actually gonna do this one. Now, um, it, it says they're gonna cover the methods and we're gonna go through the methods, um, but it says, you know, first you need to have, um, you need to have that uh, that repo um, set up on GitHub. So we will do that eventually. But the first thing we need to do is this first step that we haven't done yet that's just um, Porto Markdown, is that um, when you render, if I go back to my slides, this arrow represents rendering your website. And uh, when you render, by default, if you don't specify otherwise, um, we've just rendered our website into the root directory of the folder we made. But the instruction here, what we really want to do, and uh, this is a this is a bit of web technology that's an important little detail, <clears throat> is that we want to within a within a website, we tend to want the public to have access to stuff in just one folder that already has all the HTML and stuff we've done. And we might want to prevent the public from having access to other files that they might be able to somehow edit. You know, now this is this is a big concern for companies, for sites for commerce, maybe for research sites. For our personal website, this is not the biggest deal, but it is best practice and we're going to do it now. So there's an easy method to do this. So we're going to render our HTML to a specific directory, and then we're only going to allow the public to have access to that one specific directory on our web page. That's how it works. So we just need to set that up. The easiest way to do it is to set up our project. Um, and if we just look at our YAML file real quick. We um, we have a, a the simplest simplest um, 
web page. We're just going to actually um, add a couple of lines from there to our YAML file. And notice how it's under the project heading. There's a little bit of a thing with uh, YAML files is that this, indent, this indentation really matters. So uh, underneath the project heading, we need to indent, indent for, by two spaces and set the arguments type and output directory to make this happen. So I'm just going to copy that <clears throat> and underneath my project, I'm just going to add those two lines. To save that, go back to my website, Quarto, and I'm going to render. Now, a couple of things happened. If we just go back to our folder, the main thing that happened is that um, I just refresh this. Is uh, now we've got a docs folder here, and if we open that, what's going to be in it is all the stuff that's going to be public in our web page. So. Uh, this is the page that we just made. Website.qmd becomes website.html. By default, we get an index page. Let's just look and see what's in that. Telling me my ad block has uh, updated. Thanks very much. Let's just open up this index page. So it, it is pointing to the uh, website HTML anyway. Now, because of the uh, workflow that we did before, we, um, we do still have these website files that are sitting in here. And the docs folder is uh, just now shifting the publicly accessible files, including access to our image. So it's moved and created this for us. Now, um, this is another little technical detail. That's a little bit uh, annoying. Is that um, GitHub has its own method of creating HTML. And uh, it's called Jekyll. And uh, so what we want to do, since we've created our own HTML with Quarto, we want to tell GitHub not to use Jekyll. And so they have a little cute programmer way of doing that. And that's to create a little file. The file contains nothing, and the file is hidden. It's hidden by virtue of the name starting with a dot. And uh, we want to name this file um, dot no Jekyll. That's just a cute way of doing it. I'm just going to copy no Jekyll. Now, we can do this in the terminal. Um, but there's nothing stopping us from just right clicking and creating a new text file. And uh, selecting everything, including the dot text. Just calling in dot no Jekyll. The alternative way is to go to the terminal uh, in Windows, and that's the that's this terminal tab and typing the command um, touch dot no Jekyll. Uh, actually, that's the Linux way. It's copy NUL for null, no contents dot no Jekyll. What this does is it will just create the, the same exact document we just created, no contents. And now all we need to do is to render our site. I think we have already rendered it. And if we go back to GitHub, remember we made this a uh, GitHub repo. And if, if you were here for the last meeting, <clears throat> what we uh, what we talked about was how GitHub Desktop keeps track of all these changes. We need to put a um, a little message in this box. Can put a description. 
uh, and we're going to want to uh, commit this and publish our repository. I don't want to keep it private. That's important to uncheck or we'll just have to uh, to do it. And it's asking me where I want to publish it. And here is answer to uh, Jimmick's question. It is kind enough to ask me where I want to publish it. <laughs> and so I want to I want to pick the we Harris dot, dot me organization. OK, so I'm just going to publish that. We're five minutes over, but we have about two more minutes of work to see our website live. So we're just going to wait a tick for that to propagate over to GitHub. I'm going to go over to the GitHub website now. Look inside my organization, and I'm just going to refresh, hold down control and refresh this page. And now it says that I have one repository. So I'm going to click on my repositories tab. I'm going to open up the repositories, uh, the website repository. Now, even though we had just have a simple website, we have quite a lot of stuff going on in this repo, <laughs> quite a lot. And uh, we still have to do one thing. So th this is the last thing we need to do is um, repositories are generic places where code and other assets live in GitHub, but we have to um, adjust the settings of the repository to let GitHub know that we intend this repository to be a, a GitHub pages site. So we go to settings. And uh, down here we go to pages. And we have to just um, edit a few of these, a few of these uh, little assets. So one is the source. So if we <clears throat> we're going to deploy from a branch, and uh, the branch we're going to deploy from is main, and the folder we're going to deploy from. As docs. And uh, that is enough to set up our GitHub repository. And if I just hit save, now GitHub um, pages take a few seconds to propagate. So I'm not going to hurry for this. It'll take about one minute to do this. And I'm going to open a new web page here. And I'm going to go to. Um, let me see if I can uh, remember the URL. I think that this is going to be um, <clears throat> weharris-me.github.io. <clears throat> so this is the name of the repository. Let me just put this in a in a um, in a text document so you can see it a bit bigger. This part is the um, name of your of your GitHub account. Might remember, mine's an organization that I've named we Harris me. And if we look at my pages, uh, we can see that for the repo, it's github.com forward slash we Harris me. But for the actual web page, <clears throat> it's a bit different. It is uh, weharris.github.io and then forward slash the name of the repo. So if I copy that, paste that into the URL, hold my breath just a little bit because I want it to play, and there it goes. It did play. We're, we're nine minutes over. I've only had one little bite of my cupcake, so I'm going to have another bite. Any comments or questions? I think that's pretty good with all the hemming and hawing and cupcaking that we did to have a web page from scratch. Okay. 
with uh, show files and profiles um, reason for things like building organization websites, I'm not sure what we're going to show you guys, what the organization is all about, like the other websites you have. Two different questions, and they're good questions. It's a very good question. One question you asked was, what are the limitations of a GitHub web page? And there are some, so let me put it, let me come back to that. And you also asked, can you use it for a regular organization web page to give information about, say, a charity or a business? Let me ask the second question first is that, as far as I know, as far as I understand, there are no limits on the purpose of a web page. So you can use it for commercial, non-commercial charity for any reason within the limits of a free GitHub account. And, and there, there are limitations on a free account. The limitations include um, the fact that you can't have assets bigger than a certain size. So I think the current limit is so uh, you couldn't have a single file bigger than 100 megabytes that's pretty big though uh, but if you wanted to have a site with with files bigger than 100 megabytes that's a limitation another limitation and this is probably the biggest one is that if you i don't know have any of you in here and or in the chat if, if there are many people left has anyone ever um, configured a web page on a regular web server. Has anybody ever done that? Yeah. Yeah, some people have. Well, when you when you do that, typically you have root access and admin access to that server you're configuring, and you can do things like, oh, I want to install a database to keep track of bank records. <laughs> or something like that, or I want to keep track of whatever. You can install stuff and you have total control over giving other people at, with a, the typical way we do such things with Linux. So Linux, if you don't know, is the web server that 99.999% uh, of all web pages are hosted on, not Windows, not Macs, it's all Linux. So you have access to all those tools. And you don't have access to that on the free GitHub account. So there are limitations, but that there's no limits on what you can have within the technical limitations that I know of. Even a commercial website is OK. Any comments or further questions? I think that was pretty quick. I'm going to stop the recording. Cover quite a lot of ground. If you do think of any questions, put them into the Teams chat and we'll try to answer them and help problem solve. I hope some people make their own web page. And um, I remember the last time that we did this, I think George shared her web page with me. And Soteria, after a fashion, shared her web page with me and a few other people. So if anybody makes a web page,